Alright guys, this is a long plane review for RoboZone on the Amstrad CPC, released by Imageworks in 1991. It's a big concept game with three distinct different levels of gameplay types, run and gun, a proper 3D section and side-scrolling shooter mod. And this is kind of a forgotten game, heavily advertised and pushed at the time, but ultimately flopped. It's also a game with an eco message about pollution and saving the planet. In fact, even the manual slips in condescending tips on how to be eco-friendly. It's also a game that you're going to need to map out. And here's some maps I've done myself. I'll talk more of them in a bit, but you may want to refer back to them as I play the game. And I'll provide uh, links in the description below to, so you can open them up and perhaps watch in a second monitor to follow my progress. So let's get the game started. And a very nice loading screen here. And the game is actually known uh, mostly for its really excellent graphics, which you'll see shortly. And here we are on the title screen. Designed and programmed by Arc Developments. Um, well, Arc did do a lot of licensed titles, like Forgotten Worlds and stuff like that. Yet, um, this one was very nearly a licensed title. Apparently, when development started on this game, it was supposed to be tied in with a TV show under development, featuring ro robots in combat with each other. Uh, but the TV show never happened, um, but the game was still quite far into the development, and then they supposedly rushed this out. Um, according to the article on Moby Games website anyway. And Arc Developments were a British game developer founded by a group of former elite employees in 1988 and they closed their doors around 1996. Uh, we'll get into who maybe the programmers and graphics artists on the game in a bit but let's talk about the story of the game and what's going on. Now apparently we're in New York in the year 2067 Pollution has destroyed and crippled the planet, uh, and the rich elite live on floating cities out at sea. The rest are left to fend for themselves in the ruins. Uh, large robots called the Wolverine were constructed to patrol the deserted cities, and most of them were destroyed by the remaining humans, though. Uh, then came the invasion of the Scavengers. Huge insect-like robots destroying and taking anything in their way, mostly metal and alloys. And from that they've constructed a huge dome-like structure in what used to be Central Park in New York called The Furnace. And the more they take, the stronger they become, and the more pollution is created too. Uh, apparently there might be aliens or something, who knows. Anyway, uh, you control the last remaining Wolverine robot who has broken his programming. The inbuilt computer, known as the Oracle, is damaged beyond repair and his weapons are weak, which will need to be built up again. If the pollution level continues to increase, Wolverine will soon be unable to function. His only course of action is to somehow repair his systems and destroy the furnace and the scavengers before it is too late. The story actually is much, much larger in the manual, but I'm not going to read it out, so that, that's an abridged version of the story I've put together for you guys. To be honest with you guys, I won't worry too much about it, you just control a robot blasting things over three different levels of different gameplay types. So we're going to start off now on level one. And it's kind of a side-scrolling run-and-gun shoot -em up um, apparently this is 9am on a New York subway and uh, the area surrounding the furnace has been completely sealed off. Uh, Wolverine's only chance is to try and find a way through the old disused New York subway system which will hopefully lead him into the remains of the Big Apple and Central Park. And you can see there the Wolverine we're controlling there is obviously modelled on or shall we say influenced by, well, the ATST or Scout Walker or Chicken Walker from uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, the Star Wars movies, and maybe a bit of ED-209 from Robocop 2. And as you can see guys, some really lovely graphics there, and really nice animation on the robots, it's quite a nice big sprite. Uh, Decentish sound effects, nice smooth scrolling and plenty of action happening on the screen. 
Um, so level one is kind of a bit of a maze and you've got a very tight time limit as well. Where the time limit is denoted by the uh, pollution level which is in the bottom left corner of the heads up display. Obviously you've got an energy level, oh you just saw pollution just rise there. Um, energy level there of course just above that which you can replenish by picking up these items on the floor or they might be a weapon pickup. Thankfully that was an energy one and you're going to need a lot of energy being replenished because the attacks don't stop happening from these scavenger robots. So yes, you really do need to plan out your route and follow a map here. Uh, mostly because of two things. One, a very, very tight time limit, which I, even with the fastest route, it's actually quite close to uh, running out of time. And also because um, the more you explore, the more damage you're gonna take, and you're just gonna, not gonna have enough energy to get to the end of the level if you're just sort of bimbling around, not knowing where you're going. Because it's, it's just kind of a race to the finish, really trying to survive as long as you can as you can see there I'm almost constantly taking damage and it can be an incredibly frustrating and difficult game the first time I played this was on a one of my live streams a few weeks ago actually and I didn't last long before I uh, switched games because it was like ridiculously tough and I had no idea where I was going uh, but thank you to the World of Spectrum website, someone has ripped all the uh, background graphics from the first level and pieced them together in, into a big map. And I used that and then planned out a route uh, just using PC Paint and just drew lines as the, route, the fastest route through this level. And that's what I'm following. Um, I showed that earlier in the stream and I'll put a link in the description for you to open that yourself if you want to and follow my progress. Um, the way to get through this though is not only uh, finding the fastest route through this level uh, but learning how to defend yourself against the various robots that will come and attack you. There's like the flying bees and wasps and stuff. Um, they don't fire much um, bullets at you or wh whatever those round circular yellowy things are. Fireballs, let's call them fireballs. Um, so the, the flying bee-like creatures don't fire too much at you, you just need to quickly jump and take them out. If you notice you're getting loads of fireballs at sort of mid-height, uh, you'll have one of those sort of walking robots coming at you, just immediately duck down and wait for them to appear and just keep blasting away. Like there, duck down, wait for, them to, wait for him to appear and get rid like I just did there fantastic um, the most annoying ones are the um, like the bug little bug robots that basically shoot um, fireballs uh, to like sort of on the lower level towards like your legs and you just want to hopefully get them appearing on the screen as quickly as possible and, and dispatch them you may be able to jump over them the uh, fireballs they shoot at you but um, they're the ones that often drain the most energy and of course you've got to watch out for like the acid drips coming from the ceiling I haven't seen one of the bug like robots in a while actually I'm sure we will very shortly there's one oh so just to quickly dispatch them you might be able to jump over fireballs Thought one of those walking robots would have appeared there. It didn't, so I just carried on moving on. Um, yeah, so it controls very nicely. Um, decent uh, responsive controls uh, and smooth sprite movement. And of course, their lovely animation. It controls perfectly well. It's just quite overwhelming everything that's happening and how you've been attacked. Um, I think a lot of people probably would have been put off this game on the first level. I don't really like games that you have to make maps for and plan routes and stuff like that um, because there's not much visual clues in like the background graphics as to where you are in the uh, level so this would have been quite um, quite difficult to map um, from hand anyway at least. 
and I doubt many people um, got beyond the first level. In fact, when I was researching this game, guys, I didn't find any other long plays on the internet apart from uh, an Amiga playthrough. But there isn't a um, uh, a long play of the Specky or Commodore 64 version on YouTube. Certainly not one for the Amstrad. And any video footage that does exist for the Specky and Commodore 64 versions is just of this level and then nothing further. Which is a shame because the next two levels are rather impressive and rather good. I'm not saying this first level is particularly bad, but it's off-putting um, due to how difficult it is and having to basically map out things and how difficult it would be to map it out. So well done to the World of Spectrum guy who basically ripped all the graphics and pieced them together. Um, I, I think if I didn't have that, I probably would have given up on this game because um, I don't think I'd have the patience to map out this particular level by hand. I did do a map of the second level by hand, um, but that's a lot smaller playing area and a lot easier to do. So I was happy to do that. We'll see that shortly. Um, there we go. Um, so... Um, programmers of the game quite hard to find out who the programmers were um, given how similar the feel of the game is in terms of the, the movement and sprites and graphics and stuff to the Forgotten Worlds uh, conversion by Arc Development it may, we may be able to assume it's the same guys behind that uh, it may well be the same programmer, graphics artist and musician this being Byron Nielsen on coding Paul Walker doing the graphics and Tony or Tiny Williams on the music and I want to make a note as well this is, as all, this is also the exact same team behind Pang on the GX4000 just thought I mentioned that but they also did Bart vs the Space Mutants for Ocean Crackdown for US Gold which was crap um, Predator 2 um, which was okay and most interestingly um, X out or cross out the side scrolling sort of R type ripoff um, came out a year earlier and when we get to level 3 we can see its influence and perhaps reuse code there as well I think we could be should be coming to the end of this first level now actually Yeah, not too far, and there'll be a boss battle at the end of this level. And uh, as you can see, guys, the pollution level is already quite high there. Yes, here's the boss. We finally reached the boss with the pollution level quite high and the time limit running out. Definitely need to map through this. Um, but this actually is quite an easy boss to defeat because you can actually destroy his um, bullets being shot at you. Uh, so just keep doing this up and down, firing up and down kind of motion that I'm doing. Um, there is one bullet he will shoot out, sort of like towards like head height, which you will have to duck. I'll uh, point it out when it happens. There, that that's the one. Keep ducked for that one. Um, I have had a couple of bugs here happen where the game crashes after defeating the boss because there was still an enemy robot spawned like one of the flying bee wasp type things and that caused the game to crash it should, apparently that should have cleared off before the boss appeared um, I had to replay the first level a few times to get through it so watch out for that and there we go, that's the boss done. A nice explosion effects at the end there. And the explosion t tends to go on for a rather long amount of time there. But uh, okay, we're going to be moving on to level two now, basically called the Streets of New York, and it's the 3D section of the game. Out of defenses defeated, prepare for the Streets of New York. Now here we go. This is the 3D section and probably quite quite impressive actually how it's done. Very 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 smooth, nice big colourful graphics as well. Um, now Wolverine has to navigate the streets of New York to find the scientist simply known as Tank who originally designed and built the Wolverine. 
Uh, first of all, here's the first item we need to find in the game, which is actually very close to the start, the communications device or the Oracle computer and interface. So we're looking for the scientist known as Tank. He originally designed and built the Wolverine. Find him and he will give you the rocket boosters, which will allow you to fly and get into the furnace. Um, first though, you need to find the Oracle computer and communications device, which we have just now. Uh, without it, you can't interact with Tank, who's in his own kind of Wolverine unit, and he will likely try and destroy you without it. Um, and you'll also need to find the EFA unit, which I don't know what that is and what that means. It's not explained in the manual very well, but I think it's basically the rocket boosters and Tank will basically fix them and get them working for you. And then you can move on to the third level. Um, so yes, um, this is basically sort of a six by six grid. Um, so, um, and also the background graphics at the end there, you can see there's a city skyline, which will, that, that will tell you which, which direction you're focusing. So if you see the yellowy red uh, city, city skyline there, that means you're moving north. And you have different background graphics for the other directions too. So I built a map for this, again, link in the description below. And um, I showed it briefly at the start of this video. And, um, oh, having a lucky run here with no enemies spawning. Now there are, oh there's the um, there's tank he's hidden behind the ruins of a bus and rock there and we can clear that out of the way if we want to as well so that is tank the scientist and he says there oracle interface request acquire EFA unit over and out tank so tank is talking to you there can you see the text there at the top of the screen just below the energy level and score and pollution level it's telling you there, we found Tank the Scientist. He's that little blue and yellow Wolverine type creature, robots there behind the rock. He's telling us there we need to find the EFA unit first. There he is. And it's again, not too far uh, from his location. Um, it's quite good fun blasting these robots and other little creatures. Um, holding that fire button and moving your joystick up and down will adjust the height of your bullets um, so if you've got low down enemies you can directly fire down below a little bit better and quite nice design on some of these robots like this crab crab robot crab creature and there's the EFA e oh gosh oops just moved off the screen there to reset give myself a bit of breathing room uh, and the EFA EFA unit is there it's that little blue and white and red thing there, the tiny little thing there in front of the barrels. There it is. So follow my map, guys, and uh, and the uh, route I made. This took a lot of uh, drawing out and planning, but I was happy to do this for uh, for the long play. And it moves really nicely and smoothly. Um, I should note that this whole section is uh, missing on the Commodore 64 version, instead so they've done a 2D side-scrolling section because the poor old Commodore 64 can't handle 3D. Yikes. Anyway, this is the end of the level here. Standby to launch. Well done Wolverine, you have successfully negotiated the city. Your task is to now penetrate the, uh, the fortress and uh, the furnace, we're inside the furnace now. Now I should point out here guys, quickly, very quickly, that for some reason, the sound effects are broken for the first, uh, there we go, until about there. Don't know why that happens, I've had to try re-recording this several times and I get mixed results. Sometimes I don't get any sound effects at all, but that's a bug in the recording on Win8, but not in the game. And here we are on a side scrolling r type -E shoot 'em ups obviously, um, if you've played X out or cross out by the same uh, team of guys, um, you, this will feel very, very familiar to you. And uh, they've obviously reused a lot of codes there to, for this third level. Um, lots, of di lots of different weapon types to pick up as well. Some of the collision detection is a little bit iffy at the start of the level in terms of the background um, objects. And sometimes a little bit odd with bullets and uh, some of the ships. Sometimes you get hit, sometimes you don't. 
it seems a little bit strange sometimes. Otherwise, it's a very, very smooth plane. Um, Scully shoot them up. Nice, decent, smooth scrolling for the Amstrad. Not going to be as smooth as the Commodore 64 at 50 frames per second. Um, but I think this is a very, very decent scrolling shoot em up section. OK sound effects. Um, graphics, really, really nice. Very, very colourful. Hmm. And very good. So you've got to make it to the end and just like kill the final boss. Um, and this level is subtitled Out of the Fire and Into the Furnace. And re we've got to reach the core and kill the Furnace Guardian and put an end to the scavengers. And there we go. Now let's talk about uh, review scores at the time. I found the Amsterdam Action Magazine review score. Uh, they rated this 86% overall with a whopping 91% purely for the graphics. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are very, very nice graphics. Um, other versions of the game I've seen, well, the Speccy, um, I've seen the first level of the Speccy, decent enough for colour graphics, perhaps maybe a touch more detailed, uh, so very similar to the Amstrad uh, version, but not as colourful and perhaps not as nice looking graphics overall. Um, but I've not seen any video footage or screenshots of what level 2 and level 3 looks like. It's nowhere on the internet I've found so far, anyway. Uh, same with the Commodore 64 version, the level 1 graphics aren't as nice, but it does play quite a bit faster. Um, and it, oh, here's the boss. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the level 2, the 3D level, was completely different. It's in 2D in a side scroller. Um, poor Commodore 64 couldn't handle that, apparently. Mm. And the Amiga and Atari ST versions, um, they reviewed very, very poorly at the time. But I think probably the Amstrad version is probably the best of the 8-bit home conversions. Now with this boss battle here, you've got to wait for his mouth to open and shoot the gun that's behind the mouth. Um, if you shoot the boss anywhere on his like head or whatever, you, you, you notice your score will go up, but you're not actually causing him any damage. You've got to shoot that gun behind the mouth. It's quite difficult to do. Um, to get through this level without losing uh, all your energy and all that kind of stuff. You do get, I think, two continues if you do die. But I'm going to do this without um, using a continue. Uh, it should be nearly done, I think. So just keep moving around on that circular pattern, watch out for the bullets, watch out for the uh, other enemies that spawn quite close to you, get rid of them first, don't risk it. And we should be nearly done. There we go. Big explosion there. No sound effects though on the, on the uh, boss exploding, which is strange. We did have that on the first level, and and there we go. That is basically RoboZone completed, guys. And so let's uh, we'll see what the ending screen's like, and I'll give my final review score. As Wolverine flies away, you can see the burnt-out remains of the reactor. Mission successful, over and out tank. People once again populated the planet, and pollution was a thing of the past. The scavengers where? Finally defeated. She's been worth. Oh dear, <laughs> mistake on the final screen there. So overall, guys, I'm going to give this a seven and a half out of ten, valiant attempt. But there we go. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you all again very soon. Goodbye. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.